Welcome on into War Chant TV. I'm Aslan Hunjavani, joined by lead writer for WarChant.com, the ultimate Seminole sports source, Corey S. Clark, also known as the Corey Clark. Subscribe to WarChant.com, and now is probably quite literally the best time to do so, Corey, because we got that great promo going right now, and in accordance with our friends also at Garnet and Gold, uh, use the promo code Norvell2020, and you'll get 25% off an annual membership a $25 gift card to Garnet and Gold, which is also an e-card. So if you don't live in Tallahassee, it's fine. You can use it online. And then three additional bonus months of access to warchant.com. So, uh, I mean, it doesn't get any better than that, does it, Corey? It can't. Nope, absolutely can't. You know what can get better than, though, Aslan? What's it, that? Florida State's offensive line play in recent years. Oh. Woo -hoo -hoo. Professional segue. Yeah. Yes, uh, not my first rodeo. Absolutely amazing. Uh, hit the thumbs up like button just for that. That was that was great. Uh, golly, I can't. I should pay you to be. Let's just in the video. That. That's a wrap. I know, right? Hey, uh, you kind of broke your story down to a few different pieces. I don't want to go over it all because it's for our subscribers over at WarChant.com. But you know, a big picture thing here, Cord. Try to you know you know convince me the, the, the negative skeptical guy. If if you know the, the Kendall Bryles. Uh, Randy Clemens' marriage and synergy didn't really get this offense back to where the fans want it to be, but I guess maybe it's a little bit better. You know, what's going to be Mike Norvell and, and Alex Atkins, two guys that haven't worked together, and throw Kenny Dillingham in the mix as well, uh, three guys that might not be all that familiar with each other. Why is that sort of chemistry, and, and why will that brain trust, you think, be a, a better sort of solution for Florida State in 2020? I think a big part of it is that, especially with Dillingham and Norvell, you have two guys that had success together in the past. They've worked well together in the past. They've proven it. Willie had not worked with either one of the offensive coordinators he had or either one of the O-line coaches that he had. Um, Norvell has worked with his OC plenty. They've known each other for over a decade. Um, great working relationship. So that helps. I think Chris Thompson helps. Um, the fact that he's a former O-line coach and a good one and a big-time guy. And then, obviously, you got to – you. It all it, I hate to say it all rests on the shoulders of Alex Atkins, uh, but a lot of it does. He's the O-line coach, and the O-line play has been abysmal here for years. Through three different guys, it's been abysmal. Um, but I, you know, I hate to say that about Randy Clements. He was he was at Florida State for like nine or ten months, so we'll get we'll give him a, a, a pass. Greg, Greg Fry too, for that matter. Jeez, uh, they weren't they were left with a lot of groceries uh, to make a great meal, but still their meals were terrible. And you hope that uh, Alex Atkins can find a combination that works. I do think, number one, you have – I think the what, – what you hope is the biggest reason for a turnaround or one of the biggest reasons for a turnaround. Don't you hope that Josh Storms is as good as advertised in the strength room? I mean, when was the last time you remember Florida State not manhandling an opponent that was like a, a normal, like a Division One Power Five opponent? It just doesn't happen up front. They've put up some points, and they've, they've uh, you know, they had Cam Akers, which helped. They put up some points and put up some yards last year, much more than they did in 18, but it still wasn't great. And any time they played a team with a pulse on the defensive line, they're the ones that got manhandled. It was gross. It was disgusting. They couldn't do anything. Miami and Clemson and Florida, uh, they could not do anything with those groups. They just couldn't. That has to change. They need to start at some point being the ones that do the manhandling, but I think – you just got to try. I just think the offensive, um, the offensive brain trust is just better. I think when you have a Chris Thompson, you have obviously Alex Atkins is the most important, and he's a sharp dude who is a, a mo he's an upwardly mobile assistant coach. I think he's going to be a head coach someday, maybe very soon. Um, and he has a great track record, albeit not at big schools. He has a great track record for turning offensive lines around. And then you have Dillingham and Norvell. There, there's some things to like, Aslan. Dante Lucas is a good player. I know I'm yammering on here. They have seven guys that have starting experience. Um, so there are some pieces there for Atkins to work with, but it has to get so much better. It has to. And, you know, talent is the biggest obstacle, and you got to find five guys that can play. You got one for sure, right? Don't you think that you know can play? But you got to find four more guys. And I think, you know, as crazy as the sounds, you don't feel all that bad, though, about the, the five guys or, you know, six guys that can probably fit into those spots. You know, Darius Washington, obviously, we presume with, with fairly good confidence, is going to be an upgrade over Jawan Williams and Abdul Bello because we saw the way Jawan Williams and Abdul Bello played. Uh, right. One couple spot, Devontae Taylor 
held his own against Miami when FIU beat them. Uh, that's going to be probably an upgrade over what they had with Ryan Roberts last year. Uh, Andrew Maselli and Babion Johnson gives you options. Brady Scott, Maurice Smith uh, give you options when the guard spots. And then to your point, I mean, just how comforting, I guess, might be the lack of a better word, but just for Alex Atkins to know that he has that one, he's got an alpha guy, like a guy like Dante Lucas. I mean, it's crazy. He's on the clock, right? I mean, he can he can kind of start looking ahead to his future and, and probably will give that unit like a, a true, not only a leader, but like when your best player is your maybe your strongest, most demonstrative leader, that's got to be a good thing for you. Yeah, and I've, I've compared it before uh, on our widely popular podcast, but uh, to the Jalen Ramsey effect in 15 with that defense and how – that Florida State defense hit harder than maybe any other one but the 13 defense for, for that whole decade. It just flew around, and I think they took their cue from Jalen Ramsey. And you hope that Dante Lucas, either by sheer osmosis, uh, will sheer, sheer will, um, force of will, force of personality, can uh, – inspire is not the right word, but lead. I know he's gonna he's a he's a vocal enough guy, but lead by example and show your teammates what it's like to bulldoze someone and to pancake someone and to dominate someone. And because I think he could be that guy. I think he has all the makings of being an NFL player. I think he has all the makings of being an all conference player. He was a freshman all American. He started seven times. Um he held his own on a line that never did. So if he turns out to be your best player, which he should be, and he I mean his arms look like tree trunks and these other guys, while not as talented, can take his take their lead to follow him in the way he plays and be nasty. Be nasty, man. I'm not looking for a ton of personal fouls, but if you get one every couple of games because you block someone into the bench, that's okay. You want mean, nasty guys up front, and hopefully Dante Lucas can change not just um, his own play and get much better, but he can change maybe the whole – we use that word a lot, but like the whole culture of that offensive line room to where they're not the ones that are on their heels. They're the ones that are pushing guys over because it just – it hasn't happened in a long time. So you hope he's the leader they can follow. Yeah, that will definitely be a, a unique sort of voice and style of a, of a leader for that unit for Florida State from what we've seen obviously in years past. Uh, do check out Corey's full breakdown over at warchant.com. If you're not a member, use the promo code NORVELL2020 again – uh, 25% off an annual membership, a $25 e-card gift card to Garnet and Gold, and then three additional free months of access on top of all of that. Practice starts Friday. They will have a press conference to set the season up for us on Thursday. We'll have all of that over at warchant.com. So do stay connected. Corey, your time and your information and knowledge is just absolutely invaluable. Thank you. Hey, Aslan, don't mention it.